In this video, I will present a detailed guide to the most common Whooper interview questions and help you plan strong answers to these. So let's look at how you actually succeed in a Whooper interview. And the first thing you have to do is make sure you focus on getting the basics right. So be on time and dress formally for the interview. Show that you're taking it seriously and don't lose the job before you've even started the interview. The next thing is take time to study Whooper. You need to go to this interview knowing about their business. And I will help you do that in this video. The next thing is you need to know the key questions that Bupa most frequently ask. And then what you need to do is you need to have strong and well-planned answers for these. And by the end of this video, you will both know what questions are most likely to come up and how to answer these with detailed answers prepared. So let's start with an extremely important question, which is what can you tell me about Bupa? And they will ask this and they will expect you to have knowledge. And to be successful, you have to obviously cover the obvious. Make sure that you show them that you've got the basics of their business. Then to make your answer better, you have to show that you're well prepared, that you've actually done some research and I will help you with that research. And then you want to actually plan to impress them. Make sure you've got facts ready that they're maybe not expecting, that few people know and only people that have actually taken a lot of time to prepare would actually know. And I will help you in doing that. So let's look at how you answer this question. So the first thing is, say what it basically is. It's an international health insurance and healthcare group. That's what they do. Then you have to expand on that. What they are doing is they're looking to provide affordable health insurance and deliver high quality care. So this is a simple way of starting the question, showing that you've got the basics. Now we need to start moving slightly deeper. So what Bupa likes to market themselves as is they are helping people live longer, healthier, happier lives. And they use that a lot in their marketing and it's all over their website. So using that phrase is a good thing to do in your interview. Then you can say that they've got tens of millions of members. This is a very substantial organization and they don't just do the basics. They do insurance, they've got dental, they've got outpatient, they've got inpatient, they've got care homes, they've got hospitals. They have a wide and diverse healthcare business. They also offer preventative healthcare. It's not just when something goes wrong that Bupa helps its members. It's also helping them prevent these diseases or reducing the chance of getting those conditions. And they also provide services for screening to try and identify illnesses and diseases early before they progress and get harder and harder to treat. They were founded in 1947. That is a good number to memorize because in the answer, if you can say 1947, that shows very quickly that you've done some preparation because people who hadn't prepared wouldn't have that number in memory. You then say what Bupa stands for. It stands for the British United Provident Association. Have that memorized. That's a good thing to say in the interview. They have no shareholders. This is not a for-profit business. They reinvest all of their profits back into the company. They also have a Spanish business, which is called Sanitas, which is their largest part outside of UK Bupa. So it's a good idea to be aware of them. And they also have various charitable foundations in different countries supporting different things. So I would look up Bupa's charitable activities, what they've supported, and talk really positively and enthusiastically about that. One of the key things that differentiates Bupa from their competitors is that they are non-profit and that they have um, donated large amounts of money to charity and reinvest all of their profits back into delivering better health care. You should also be aware of the countries that they serve. So they're constantly expanding. Currently, the largest businesses in the UK, they have a large presence in Spain. They also have a presence in Australia and they have been expanding. And it's a good idea to be aware of what the top markets are at any given time. Another top tip is to take a little bit of time to read Bupa's annual report. And I don't mean reading every single word. I mean opening it up, having a flick through and reading the key points and then saying in your interview that you took some time and you've read their annual reports to help understand in a greater degree how their business works and maybe say a few things that you found in the annual report that you found interesting. So feel free to take lots of notes from this, have loads of bullet points or screenshot this um, section and you can take this to help you to prepare. The next question I want to look at is extremely common and Bupa likes to ask this because it's so important. And they could ask you, why Bupa? Why do you want to work here? And so I can't tell you exactly what your reasons are for working there, but I can give you lots and lots of suggestions 
of things that they are looking for in the answer and things that you could say. So the first thing you want to think about is what makes Bupa special. You could apply to lots and lots of different places. What is it about Bupa that you quite like? You might say that you support Bupa's mission, that, that you're really passionate about what they, they do. They are providing a great service at an affordable price that is much more accessible than other healthcare providers. You believe in the nonprofit model. You believe that healthcare shouldn't be about maximizing profit, that healthcare should be about maximizing health and that Bupa actually cares very deeply about its customers and that the non-profit model makes Bupa even better at what they do. You could talk about the awards that Bupa's won for the best place to work. Bupa is often featured very, very prominently and very highly on rankings of the best employers to work for. So look up, have they won any awards recently that show that this is perhaps a really great place to work? You could talk about positive impact that you can achieve from working at Bupa, that you believe that Bupa deliver outstanding care. And again, they have won awards for the quality of their care. And you may want to mention some of the most recent awards because that's also showing off your knowledge. Then you have to think about why is working at Bupa right for you? So you could say a few things about why this is the right job. So you could say it's an excellent match for your skills and explain what skills you have and why Bupa is a perfect match. You could say things like, I love to help patients, show your passion for that side. Say that you've got a caring nature if you're applying for something that's going to involve delivering a lot of care. Say that you'll find the career very rewarding. Then you need to think about how, how you could develop and progress. How are you going to get better over time? And is Bupa the best place to do this? So you could say that Bupa is committed to continuous learning and maybe give some examples of where you've seen Bupa demonstrate this, that the CPD opportunities that you think will be there. You may want to use the phrase that I see long-term career potential with Bupa. That's a good phrase that shows that you're really serious about the job and perhaps you're looking at this as a long-term option, which is always a positive thing in an interview. And you could say that it's a large and diverse organization. And because of its size and diversity, you feel that there'll be lots of opportunities to grow and develop with the business. And then when you're answering it, make sure you're enthusiastic. The more enthusiastic you are in answering it, the better your answer is gonna sound. So I would have an answer ready for this. I would have bullet points of five or six points that you want to make. And I would use the suggestions that I've got there as a starting point and have a bullet pointed list of why you actually want to work here. This question comes up in virtually every Bupa interview and you want to have an answer ready and thought out so you can give a strong, confident answer that will convince them that Bupa is the right place for you. They often ask about what is your greatest weakness and you need to have thought of one. So for the greatest weakness, you want to firstly show that you can be reflective. So they don't want to hear silly answers that are not weaknesses or that you don't have any. You need to show that you're actually aware of what you need to develop. Then you need to think about what are you going to do about it? You've got this weakness, how are you going to overcome it? What could you do to develop? What are your goals that you need to achieve in order to make this weakness not be a weakness? Because they would rather hire people that know what weaknesses they've got and that are actively trying to improve themselves. But make sure that whatever you choose as your weakness won't harm your performance at Bupa. It has to be something that they don't care about. And I'll give you some suggestions of some bad answers and some good answers. The way to answer it is very, very simple. So here's a template. So you say a notable weakness I have identified and which I hope to overcome in time is, say what your weakness is. But once you've told them what the weakness is, don't talk about your weakness in great detail. Don't explain why your weakness is a big problem. Then what you do is you say, as part of my development to address this weakness, I hope to, and then say two or three things that you could do to develop, to overcome that weakness. It might be doing some training. It might be going on a course. It might be something that you will look to develop longer term in the role. You could say various things that you could do to overcome the weakness. So bad ideas is I don't have any weaknesses. I'm a, prof I'm a perfectionist that they won't take seriously. Or if you're applying for a medical role, saying that you've got a history of medical malpractice. Anything that would affect your chance of getting the job or anything that they're looking for, it should not be a weakness. Some good ideas that you might want to use in your interview is spelling complex words if you're in a job that doesn't involve lots and lots and lots of report writing. Maths, if you're applying for a job where you're not going to be doing very much maths. 
but you maybe if you're promoted have to do more of it and you're going to develop that if you only speak one language that is of course a weakness it would be much better to speak a second language and that could be a goal that you're setting you could say that delegation is a weakness if you're not actually going to be delegating to anyone if you're not managing anyone then that could be a weakness but if you've got an ambition of moving into management you need to develop your skills at delegation or if you're in a role that doesn't involve any public speaking you could talk about public speaking that you're terrified of speaking in large groups of people you've done it once and it was really scary and you really didn't like it and you're hoping that in future you're going to try and push yourself to do that and overcome that fear for example that could be something you could talk about so pick a good weakness have a weakness ready before your interview and if you do all of this and you follow the advice in this section you stand the maximum chance of being successful so let's look at the next question which is where do you see yourself in five years and you're not going to have a good answer unless you plan it you can't just think up a five-year plan in 10 seconds on the spot in an interview have an answer ready and so we'll look at the elements of a good answer and the elements of a bad answer so in a good answer it needs to be believable something that they're going to take seriously because you want to be taken seriously the next thing is you want to present an outline plan so you don't have to tell them exactly in five years time i will be doing this role you want to talk about what you see yourself doing over the course of those five years and the journey that you could go on and it's an outline of things that you're looking to explore rather than having to be extremely specific because no one knows exactly what they'll be doing in five years a good idea is to check linkedin that lets you see what have other bupa employees done from joining the company to five years later and it gives you an idea of what reasonable progression looks like and what other people have achieved with the company the next thing is make sure your answer shows learning growth and development good answers talk about getting better they talk about i'm going to learn this and i'm going to work on this and i'm going to develop this and it gives a story of how you get from where you are now to where you want to be in five years and it's really positive to talk about learning and development in any answer the next thing is what does bupa have to offer so think about what you can achieve with the company because you want to work here you're applying for a job to work at bupa so bupa should really be part of your five-year plan the flip side is bad answers so anything that is absurd or unreasonable is going to make you look very silly so be careful to make sure that your answer is of course reasonable the next thing you must not do is you must obviously not insult the interviewer some of the worst answers say in five years time i want to be where you're sitting i want to be doing your job and then you find out it's taken that person 15 years to get to that job and you're going to do it in five that looks slightly arrogant and maybe quite insulting then the next thing is don't give an expectation of an automatic progression that you're going to be promoted automatically and that you just expect in five years you will be for example a senior manager and you don't give any explanation of how you're hoping to achieve this or why you have that ambition and what you're going to have to achieve in the five years in order to enable that progression that's going to be a very bad answer and then you also have to screen what you're saying to make sure that it is relevant to bupa you don't want to talk about anything that's irrelevant you may have lots of things you want to do within the next five years but you want to focus only on things that are specific to your work and to your bupa role to be successful let's look at some things that you should be saying so you might talk about the journey to plus one so generally moving up one level in five years is quite reasonable but you're talking about the journey to getting there saying that in five years i'm looking to move in the direction of this role and in order to do this what i'm planning to do is and talk about how you're going to get there rather than just saying that's what i'm going to do in five years some other things you can talk about is you could talk about building more experience make sure you've showed them that you've got the experience and job you're applying for but then talk about some other wider experience that you would hope to gain in order to advance towards your five-year goal you may talk about mentoring others so in five years you'll be very very solidly secure in your current role and you will be hoping that over time you're going to take some opportunities to mentor and help develop others within five years you may talk about increasing leadership so you may not have an exact idea of what leadership role you're hoping in five years but you're saying over the course of five years you're looking to take on at an appropriate time slightly increasing levels of responsibility and increasing leadership you may talk about gaining further and additional qualifications so if you have an interest 
in taking additional courses and getting additional qualifications. Now is a good time to express this while you've got management's attention. And it may be that those opportunities may come up. You could talk about being really outstanding in your current role. So if you're not looking to progress, talk about being really, really brilliant in that role and how you're going to achieve that. And of course, you should be saying that you're highly confident in the role and this is the right role for you. And over five years, you want to continuously develop and be seen as someone with an expert, an excellent track record and that you've built that over time and you're seen as someone who's solidly outstanding in that role and is highly trusted in the organization. And that's how you answer that one. The next question that is extremely important is the tell me about yourself. And they may ask this towards the beginning of the interview and it's a good idea to have a bullet pointed list and be focusing on what they want to hear. So you want to talk about your past, talk about now, talking about the things that they want, and then a few sentences about the future that shows your motivation for this role. So the past is very simple. Talk most about your most relevant experience. So think about the job you're applying for and think about every job you've had in the past and pick those that are the absolute most relevant. Healthcare experience is really important. So I'd mention all the experience that you've got in healthcare because it matches really well to Poopa's business. And then talk about your wider experience. So you remember that you've not got hours to talk about this, you've got to prioritize. So prioritize and talk lots about your most relevant and then just briefly mention, even just by naming the job, other roles that you've had as telling them about yourself. And then any qualifications, training and professional achievements that you've got, it's a good idea to list these as well. So you've got a nice introduction to your past. Then you think about now, think about what Bupa wants. So you could say that you're reliable, that you're hardworking, that you're a team player, that you're compassionate, especially if you're applying to a care role, that you're passionate about delivering excellent care because that's a key part of what Bupa is trying to do. Maybe you're very successful academically and you could back that up. That's a good thing to say, particularly for clinical based roles or roles where academic background is very important. And then definitely make a point of saying that you're aligned with Bupa's values. And I would take time to memorize Bupa's current list of values and their mission statement. Then your future. So remember when we looked at the why Bupa question, I would summarize that in one sentence. So when you're wrapping up, you want to say, and I'm looking to join Bupa because and then you answer that. Say simple things like, I love working in healthcare because that's a nice positive thing to say. And then you could say something like, I see great potential to develop a long-term career with Bupa. That's a nice way to end off that answer. So talk about your past by prioritizing, give them a list and talk about some key attributes that you have that are relevant to the job. And then a short one or two sentences that summarize why Bupa is the right career move for you. And you've got a great answer to tell me about yourself. And it's a really a good idea to have this one planned out in advance. And now before we finish, let's look at some questions that you could ask Bupa at the end of the interview. So they probably will ask, do you have any questions for us? And the answer has to be yes. So let's look at some and you can pick a few that you might want to ask. So you've got some ready and you want to also perhaps consider thinking up some of your own to make sure that you've definitely got some good questions to ask. You're probably only going to be able to ask maybe three to four questions maximum. So I would definitely have at least as a minimum two. So let's look at some suggestions. You could say thinking personally, what attracted you to join Bupa and what do you enjoy most about working here and share in their enthusiasm and link that to your motivations for joining. You could say, I understand that Bupa is committed to professional development. Therefore, can you tell me more about the CPD opportunities in my role and show a lot of interest in your development and your continuous learning? You could say, what would you suggest that a new hire to Bupa in this role do before starting to be well prepared for day one, if successful? And then if they suggest, here are some things that I would suggest you do to be well prepared, make a commitment to doing those. You could say, could you tell me more about the next steps in the Bupa recruitment process, including an approximate timeline for results and feedback, because you probably do want to know that. And then make sure you thank the interviewer for their time, reiterate your interest and end the interview on a positive, and that's a nice way to round off. And I hope this video was very helpful to you. Post in the comments what questions Bupa asked you. Please like and subscribe. And finally, thank you very much for watching.